fear. Shall we say it together? Fear, fear or joy. So I am taking this, take that. Other side of fear is joy. Then, first joy is that of belonging. Second joy is very important from not to 18 years. Second is how valuable I am. How you are writing now? You have to take the landscape of the book. You, you need a uh, really you can take two pages or else if it's a A4 book, uh, take the landscape side. If you don't have, we can get down. Uh, what is this? A4 pages. How valuable am I? Will you ask your neighbor how valuable am I? Then I am very useful. Will you tell your neighbor? I am very useful. Even when I am 95 years old. So, not to 18, it's the joy of belonging or the fear of not belonging. That was there or whatever. In the womb itself, you felt rejected. So I'm, I'm plumbing the line that it's, if it's not joy, it will be fear. Joy is, uh, fear is the absence of joy. Uh, so when you are between 19 and 45, you are always into value adding and wanting to get equipped, skilled. Uh, you feel worthful. So we do uh, some more training, uh, another module, more education, whatever, uh, all that. So after 45, who will sign me up? What is your heart saying? Who will sign me up? So uh, to illustrate my little model, shall we start with the Lord's Prayer? Will you say the Lord's Prayer by heart? Ladies first. Okay.
different lack feeling, then we want them to fill it up with the things that they feel the parents didn't provide, didn't you understand this? Their thinking may be right or wrong, but they will feel this need to fill up. Rather than feeling from above, from God the Father or parents, they will try to fill up by themselves. So I am bringing you to the theory, which I will draw at this end. You can be filled from above, which is top down filling, or from below. I drawing this, which is bottom up filling. So let's say a child who is 12 years old, he'll be feeling from my father loves me, my mother loves me, they do this for me, they do that for me. They are there for me, you get that. And then we, it's, and then we know in the cascade of love, are you writing what I am writing down? You can write it down and draw this. Then you will understand what you are drawing. In the cascade of love, love flowing from top to below. But if you need a pen and a paper, isn't it? Here is the pen, and here is the paper. This you have to do like exercise while we go along. Then you can practice this even for a work-life balance seminar. You might need something to keep under it. So, so child feels so we call it the priority of love. Nothing can substitute for that. Shall we say priority of love? What is that? Our Father. Our Father. Who is in heaven. Hallowed be your name. Take me into your name. Give me the ownership of your name. Own me by, own me by your name. So, Arithra is Arithra. Silva, uh, Indira, Indira is Indira. Vijayapura, isn't it? So, everybody has a father's name they have taken. That's their value for a long time. That, that is their sense of belonging and security. So, here you can put security also. You can put identity also. Here it is worth and value. Here it is, I am very useful. I am always signed up. Every day I have something to do. Signed up. So I am significant. What does significant mean? I am signed up. Can you imagine a consultant who gets no work? He feels terrible, isn't he? Nobody is consulting. So we are thinking about the 12 year old child. The priority of love, cascade of love, love of God the Father. Then, parental love. Parental love. Then, when you come to marriage, How did you say love you? Did you say, give me your love? No, it's not you said, I give myself to you. That's, that's how it is. You give yourself to the other, isn't it? So in marriage, in this self-giving, the real authenticity of God's love is made. And from that flows down, from top to below, kids. Yeah, I hope you are drawing on this. Authenticity of love. Why? Why was it God kind of love? I gave you my self. 
We did not say, give me. We said, I'll give myself to you. She also said, I give myself to you. And this has to continue like long. That's how marriage is made. Marriage is made. Continues to be made. One God the Father, two parental love authority, three the authenticity of the love of marriage, love of family, four born again. Why do I call it top down? What did you do for you to be born again? We did nothing. God did everything, isn't it? Cross was enough. Christ is enough. I think we have a song that says that isn't it? Christ is all. Christ is enough. Christ is enough. So this is a person whose heart is crying out. Our Father, shall we say that together? Our Father, your name, give me your name. Our Father, give me your name. Now there are some birth certificates. Father's name is not there. You know what a slur it is, isn't it? What a slur it is. That child will feel it all the time. So our Father, heart, heart's cry is our Father, why is, why is the heart? For His name to own us. For His name to own us. Hallowed be Your name. May Your name own me. Whatever I do, let it come under Your holy name. Whatever I do, let it be let it be oh, let it be ownable under your name. Let me not do top down for you. So the love of God the Father, when we are birthed and He puts the God's hope into our spirit and sends us to our mother's womb, all his priorities isn't it? We did ask. He did it. Then our parental love. Then how we make marriage, how we make marriage in, in the love of God, even unbelievers make marriage in the love of God. Marriage is natural law. Marriage is before law. Marriage is before sin. Understand the theology? Marriage is before sin. So all people are in, in, endued with a with a uh, Edenic sense of God's love for marriage. So that redemptive thing of God goes on in marriage. So when when we are in an age when marriage is denied, homosexualism is rampant, people live together without marrying, don't want to have children, it's, then we know we are in end time. Because that redeeming grace of marriage is getting eroded more and more, isn't it? They will come to a stage, will come to a stage, they are so animous towards marriage. God will say, now I'll have to come and take over. That's one aspect of the end time phenomenon. When will Christ come? When families are very difficult to hold families together and Christians are being reviled, already it's happening, for saying there's only one kind of marriage, isn't it? It's happening. Thank God for Sri Lanka. 
and there's only one kind of marriage. So that's a little about top-down feeling marriage. I give you myself. Born again, experience, God gives himself, Christ gave himself on the cross. Then we, are, we belong again in a spiritual family. You have one father in Christ. So when, we, when people change church, it's a tragedy. They are breaking the cascade of love. And there's no belonging anymore. They'll change once, they'll change again. It, it'll be an association of convenience. This is why we don't encourage this. So when people try to come from another church, we, you know that. So we ask why, why are you doing this? Yeah. So we want people to be born again and belong again. So when people break, having been born again and belong again, they break it. It breaks the heart of God. Though church has easily agreed to this, this is not God's idea of church. But there is a cascade of love flowing to belong again and spiritual family. Then spiritual fathering. Then the seventh is doing 2T22, which is one of our core values. You get a chocolate if you tell it by heart. 2 Timothy 2 2. 2 Timothy 2 2. You get a chocolate if you tell it by heart. I get to eat the chocolate. What I, Peter, what I, Timothy, what I, Paul, uh, you saw from me, heard from me, commit thou to faithful men, able to teach others. So that is Paul, Timothy, fabulous people, faithful and able, others. How many generations? One, twelve Timothys. 144 faithful able men, 1728 in that cluster. You know, Jesus Christ for three and a half years made 120 disciples. That is Jesus Christ. See, three and a half years, real stairs, lifelong stairs. Who will? Who will commit it to others? Who will commit it to others? So now let's say, let, let's take, start with Romy. When Romy, if Romy is Paul, she commits it to Rosie, and Rosie commits it to Indira, and Indira is doing it so well, then Romy can go to heaven. You get the idea. Well, you are doing, you have now got on to the process, then the fourth generation is now inside. So who said in the fourth generation you will conquer the land? To whom did who say? In the fourth generation you will possess the land. Hmm? God told who? Not Moses. Someone older than Abraham. He said for 400 years you are descendants will be slaved in Egypt, but in the fourth generation they will come and conquer the land. So if there is a spiritual movement that will go to the fourth generation, they will conquer the land. So there is no revival movement that continued to the fourth generation, isn't it? John Wesley was dead in 1789. What else happened in 1789? Another chapter. At least the lawyers must remember this. Very good. French Revolution broke out in 1789. And that's the year John Wesley died. He died on a Monday and he was 87 years old. And on the Sunday before that, he had preached only five times. What an output of life is it? Tremendous, tremendous. Yeah. And he thought he was dictating a sermon, but that's his usual habit. He dictates the sermon he preached on Sunday to publish it. Because books are rare and many people are uneducated. Every third house in Wesley's time was a gym den. They used to distill Arakko, Kasipur. That's how bad it was. 
England was. So they saved Wesley's movement, completely changed England, and prevented a revolution like in France. Uh, so this is all about the fourth generation. So did you understand the seven, uh, seven steps of the cascade? Can you explain it in your next cell? Or to anyone else? How the cascade of love works? And why this is such an important core value for us? This is the very uh, part of our genome. We can't give up that Paul to Timothy, Timothy to Timothy commits it to faithful and able people. So pioneers work by hearing and sight. Paul said, what I Paul, what you heard from me, you heard, you saw. But with the next generation, you have to commit it properly, commit, otherwise you lose it. Then they will do it for another generation. Psalm 78 also has this four generation process. Where God is God is God of the Old Testament and God is God of the New Testament. So this is filling from above. Did you understand? So when someone is not in this cascade of being filled from above, what does he feel from? Bottom up. Will you tell say with me bottom up feeling? What is bottom up feeling? One, I will do all I can. Do all I can. You are writing down now. Do all I can. Ashanti, you are writing carefully and you will please send it to me on a bit of a note like that. Do all I can. What, what am I now looking at? What is bottom up for you? Two, I owe nothing to anybody. I owe nothing to anybody. Why? I got it myself. Do all I can. Three. Then things that have happened in the past also fills me. My past keeps coming to my present. Fear. Bitterness, tit for tat, is part of my life. That's the way it is. I, I give back what I got. I give back what I got. That's the moment. I give back. Give back what I got. So there's a bit of fight, fright, and flight. Where no man pursues, I flee. Mm -hmm. uh, bottom up feeling, huh? So it's a survival mode, fighting mode. I do for myself. There's no idea of legacy. No legacy. I am for me. Entire generation can live like this. I am for me. Anything else you like to say about the bottom of feeling? Of course, this is not the way we want to do it, isn't it? We want to be in a cascade of love when a priority of love is filling us and teaching us, molding us to give out of love, isn't it? Out of sacrifice. That's the way of God the Father flowing through us. What is my birth? 
all i do belongs in his name in the name of jesus all i do belongs in his name in the name of jesus and what do i do thy kingdom come thy will be done thy kingdom come thy will be done Then we go to one John two three thirty. We do read one John two thirty. Are you please read one John two thirty? Yes. fathers because ye have known him that is uh, from the beginning and i turn to you young men because ye have overcome the wicked one i write unto you little children because ye have known the father now little children they their great identities know the father and they always say give me Give me my name is Jimmy. That's all right. A little Jimmy. Then we have young men. Young men say, "Let me show you what I can do." So you must give young men enough things to do. Because they are in that age of wanting to do and keep adding value. They want to add skill. They want to add knowledge. They are very keen on these two: knowledge and skill. Quite rightly so. But that is what we will get them to places. Okay. Then there are fathers. what are they saying let me add character and let me help you with my help you with your attitude so do we need children yes of course do we need young men and young women yes of course do we need fathers no we can do it all without fathers that be dangerous isn't it so what do father said character and attitude so three generations working together and the fourth is getting birthed so this kind of father is over what if This is the over fortified thinking. This is the 19 to fortified thinking. This is the not to 18 thinking. Now, a voice speaks. A voice will say, "Be wise." Oh, 
class in the night. Two of us come and boys do a worship time. And normally worship time arises and they go on for about 45 minutes leading worship by themselves. Pragit is Pradeep is the one who starts it and he's quite good. He sings well and they really join in. Then we all join in prayer. That day the worship was not arising and you had to pay and pay and then I was asked to pray. As I opened my mouth, a joy burst came about 12 feet over my head the downstairs hall. And as the joy burst came, I saw a big bird whose feathers were folded, wings were folded, quickly winged up with the joy and the praise ascending. So I thought it must be the, like the, enter your gates with thanksgiving and dwell in my courts with praise. I thought that's that angel that waits to like open a gate when, the, when, the, when the, that angel hears thanksgiving. And it was. And then we were told, write joy across the skies of Sri Lanka during December. So tomorrow is December 1st. What are we getting ready for? Right? Joy! Unspeakable, full of glory. Because we have gone through a difficult uh, election time and we have had our fears and worries and those who got fearful get into a crew of fear and they expect the worst to happen, isn't it? And they are collecting data on that is terrible, this embassy is terrible, that is terrible, worst will happen. This is what we told you. Terrible kind of problems, isn't it? I don't know how we all are. Now we must fill the skies with our expectation of gladness, joy, because this is a season of do not be a Yeah, what did the angels say? Do not be a afraid. I bring you good news of great joy for all the people who won the election, who lost the election, who didn't vote. I bring you good news of great joy. So we must go beyond this uh, good evening. <laughs> I'm demonstrating a prophecy. We must uh, bring we must, uh, we must go with good news of great joy. So we have many programs also. So let tomorrow be, every assembly be full of Do not, shall we say together? Do not be afraid. I bring to you good news of great joy. Uh, for all the people. Who are all the people? Upright people, wicked people. Poor people, sound people. Poor people, rich people, uh, you know what I mean. Uh, in Jesus' time, who were the outcasts in Jesus' time? Samaritans, obviously prostitutes are always. Who were the outcasts in Jesus' time? Lepers. Even Galileans, like they were looked down upon. Where they were a rough and tumble people, their language is different. Even Galilee had got quite mixed up, isn't it? Galilee had pigs. The policy is terrible. Yeah, so, you know, they, they looked down on Galileans and so on. Uh, they were uncool people, my God. Thing. You, you know what they stole of Peter, isn't it? You speak like a Galilean, that kind of thing. Who were the other outcasts in the times of Jesus? What about tax gatherers? They were rich people who had reached from Judaism. I mean, they were still Jews, but they were now doing this thing that uh, taking usury, taking taxes was against the law of Moses. So they are taking taxes from their own people. So that's why they were so despised. Do you understand the theology I'm saying? Why were tax gatherers so despised? Zacchaeus, Matthew? Because uh, they were not supposed to do that to their brethren. You remember Moses' law? You don't take taxes from from uh, Jews. So when Jesus was asked for taxes, the, uh, what, did, what did Jesus tell Peter? It is uh, the children don't pay, you know, children don't pay taxes, but uh, because we have to obey the law, uh, the, the Pharisees said, your master is not paying temple taxes. This was not the Roman Empire. 
this was the the, the Jewish empire of the priests and then and then uh, Jesus called Peter you will find a fish with a gold mine in the mouth pay your taxes and mine so tax gatherers who else there were zealots also who had taken the zone huh? they were also bitter for them Simon the zealot who the other so what am I these all people huh? the good news is for all people so think of the way Jesus reached out to all the beggars but against the beggar all people leper and then the lame lame could not enter the temple disabled people are not supposed to be so they were all outside the temple hoping for some Amen. mercy uh, women unless they had issue of blood uh, women were not so bad in, in, in Judaism much better than most nations widows widows yeah, in any culture we do us. So in the New Testament you, you find this, this, this. So you realize that Jesus in his short tenure of ministry of three and a half years reached to all of them. So we must be a ministry that will reach the people who tend to be unreached. That's why the Lord has brought us here near our Juno there. So we can never forget our genome. Huh? What is our genome? We have been in existence since 1981. We can't write genomes. Genomes come from where? From? You understand genome is our chromosome content. The, the, the way gospel ministries got birthed. We were rural and urban together, isn't it? We were poor and rich together, isn't it? And we grow only by conversion growth. We don't do sheep shifting. And then everyone has a ministry. Everyone who is part of gospel ministries is born here that you have a ministry to do. So we, we have been told this by our you are a church of ministers. Everybody has a ministry. Now you understand the genome. Now looking back for 30, how many years? 38 years? Looking back 38 years, we understand our genome, isn't it? We didn't create it. Way God has birthed us, we are understanding this. Okay, so that is the that is about the spiritual house to which we belong. Spiritual family and house is very important. We are filled from above, top down filling. So we did seven steps to that. Then we, we uh, then then there is this not good thing of bottom up filling. We don't want to go there. The bottom up filling. We don't want to open this tab. We want to open this tab to be filled from above. What is the cry of our heart? Shall we say together? Our Father, for His name. Why do we live? Our Father, for His name. Yeah. Okay. Now, we go to the voice. What did the voice say? What did the voice say? Roti roti roti, roti roti roti, roti roti roti, roti tender, roti tender roti. That's what the wise said. How are we supposed to live? Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the that's the right way. But the other wise says roti roti roti, roti roti roti, patu patu patu. Yeah, the other wise. Bread means, of, of course, the things that our body craves. The same theme Jesus takes up takes up in Matthew 6, 25 to 30, where he's such an excellent teacher. He teaches systems all the time. What did the second voice say? Ha ha! Ha ha! See! See! See, ha ha ha, my glory, see what you have. And if you just see, see how, how worthful you can be, I want to give you all this if you would only worship me. And what did Jesus say? Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God only. Do you understand what I am doing? Now, last Sunday morning I did this in 
this in the congregation, I raised up six columns. So one, one set of people are going on with the Lord's Prayer. Next set went down with the uh, 1 John 2.30, the voice. This is the roti 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 with the voice. What was the last? What did the voice last of all say? Go high and jump so that you will know how high you are. High jump. So it comes again and again. It comes to pastors. It comes to businessmen. It comes to politicians. It comes to everybody. You got the three voices. Okay. Then we will do. We'll do. Matthew 11, 28. I'll do it with Matthew 11, 28. Amen. This is our worth. 
and this is how we add value. Correct? Even if we have to pray for our presidents or speak to them or speak to anybody, we know this is the process of gold. Gold that does not perish. We never give up on it. We never trade it for anything else. Amen. Positions may come, positions may go. This does not change. This does not change. This is our goal. We are fixed on it, isn't it? We will increase in the knowledge of the Lord. So what did Paul say? Philippians 3.14 I presume to know him to the mark of the price of the high calling in Jesus Christ. This is the price for which we will pay the price. P-R-I-C and P-R-I is a name. This does not change. Once we were young, we are now older. This has not changed. This can never change. Amen? Yeah. This never changes. Okay? This never changes. This is the pearl of great price. Third. Yes, sir. For my yoke is easy and my, and Again, my, and my burden is like Yoke is easy, but there is a mission. What is the burden? That which draws. So the, in the yoke we learn and in the yoke we walk. Learn, walk and work. Shall we say together? Learn, walk, work. So we all have a mission, which is the burden of the Lord, beginning with our egos, and then whichever place He places us in the secular world, we have this unceasing work of Christ, isn't it? We work with Him. It's the eternal work. We have rightly understood our work. This is the work, isn't it? We never give up. Unceasing. Even when we are I, as I told you, John Wesley was 87 years old. He died. He died on a Monday. And the Sunday before, he had preached five times. And on Monday, he got up as usual. And what he did was, on Monday, he dictated his sermons. He started dictating his sermons and then passed away. Fully alert. With all his senses, God took him to go away. Great life, isn't it? I mean, how industrious he was. And on horseback, you know, not in a motorized way. <laughs> on horseback, he had traveled the day before to five places to preach. First place was four in the morning. How did he do this? Yeah. How did he do this? Grace, grace, grace. So this is that. Now that is Matthew 11. So you, you understood the way I interpreted it, isn't it? Yoke is easy and burden is that is the mission. We can't escape. No, no, no. We don't want to escape it, isn't it? We were called with it. We were born again for this, isn't it? This is a burden. This is what works in us. Nobody has to tell us, though we all need encouragement from each other, gear up from each other, the burden of the Lord. This is the same, same thing as it in that. Wherever we are, this is working. Isn't it? We never change. From glory to glory, we are transformed. By the growth of the Lord goes on. Isn't it? How, how wonderful when we meet him. Uh, Amy Carmichael said, I want to go to heaven, swords drawn in a chariot of fire. Of course, she she was uh, she fell somewhere from age 51, she was paralyzed. She had to be carried or helped to go to, from place to place. But she lived till about 81. She lived till India was independence. She died in 1951, I think. She has come to Sri Lanka once. And she worked in Hendrakoli in Lampa. And the Buddhists came against her. She was going to settle here. But she settled in Danabu. And you know, did her life for Amazing, isn't it? The biography is called Gold Pod. And it has stories of people from India, simple ladies, who became great servants of God because of one life in Okay. 
So that was the mission. We all have a burden, burden, mission, and legacy. Generations to come will say, yeah, like for Rebecca, you are blessed. Now, Mark 3. Same, same process. Mark 3. Mark 3, 13. and put them in prison. Same authority that high priest had. So he was an apostle for the high priest on the way to Damascus when Christ arrested him and said, you are now going to be my apostle. You understand the meaning of apostle? Same authority of the original. Will you write it down? Same authority of the original. Same authority of the, not a deliverant, of the original. He was not going out with a letter. He was going out with the same authority of the original. Okay. Finally, we want to do this last column. A voice. Will you say that again? Voice. What does this voice say? Roti, roti, roti. 
See the glory. Job. This is the voice of Eden after the fall. Genesis 3.10. I'm sure you read Genesis 3.10. He said, I heard thy voice in the garden and was afraid. <gasps> afraid! So in the Christmas call, he addressed the afraid. Do not be afraid. Then he said, Because I was naked. Yeah, I lost it all. What does naked mean? I am worthless. I lost it all. And what did I do? I hit myself. I am hiding. I can't see any future for myself. So that's the gospel call. Let's pray. Any any thoughts, anything you'd like to add or Uh, 
So then we have them and insisted this is our general value sitting together, one with another. We have to do it together. So I believe uh, you should pray for all us in this. Now, in our club assembly, you are my equals, isn't it? Uh, so, though I am spiritually the pioneer, so in every assembly also the pastor must get equals. Otherwise, the assembly won't be strong, isn't it? So, this is the thing that uh, before they get some, some more older, they must uh, have equals coming in and getting saved and working alongside them. Otherwise, the next generation will be automatically weaker. Yeah, so it's a real important point for us in this time. Every assembly we will have. We have got some Tamil assemblies coming in who are very strong. There's a chap from Mana. His name is Amal. He sings worship stronger than Yusunes, our better group master. He's, he has been a violent man, but saved. And being by himself, very regular at the pinion prayer parliament. So, man is very fine. No? They come from far because of that sense of doing it together. Yeah. So, to ourselves also, others must come who will become part of the God process at every age. Yeah. Today, we have one from our next generation. We have to carry this all the others have downstairs. Then you have to practice. Any other thoughts? Try to work out the columns, pray through. I mean there are other scriptures if you want to add, you can certainly add more. You see this process being repeated uh, in different different ways. Then his favor amongst the twelve, the favorite, and then they take his peace to others. Did you understand the Christmas mandate? Luke 2.14, glory to God in the highest. That's where it begins. And those men among whom his favor rests, that would be the Christians. And then where favor rests, there will be shallow and prosperity and the gospel going on. Did you understand? So the three tiers are there all the time. So it's a model to uh, practice, uh, look at, pray through. Yeah. So this part must happen. People being reconciled to Jesus Christ because of our faith. Cross must happen in salvation. This is our mission, burden, and legacy. That is 2 Timothy 2 2. We wrote 2 Timothy, isn't it? Here it is. The seven steps of the casket God the Father, parental love, love in marriage, of giving to each other throughout life. You can't say I'm married for 30 years and rest will happen automatically. Certainly not. It must be a daily thing. Born again, everything Jesus gives. Belong again, spiritual house and spiritual, uh, the genome of the spiritual house. Then, you may have many tutors, but I will got you in Christ, the spiritual father. Then the Four generation process. I Paul, you Timothy, coming to fabulous people, faithful and able, who will take you to others. That's the general happening till Christ comes. We will start some prayers. I have been looking at Hosea 14. Will you please turn to Hosea 14? and reading it, putting Sri Lanka everywhere possible. Hosea 14. You know, Hosea is God's love story and Hosea's love story. 
God told Hosea to Hosea to marry a prostitute, and she was ready. After that, she went back to her old profession. Then God told Hosea, "Go and stand in the same queue that her clients are going in. There's no other way to meet her." So he, like another client, went in the queue and said, "Come home," and she came. So that's the story of Hosea. So Hosea is a very tender prophecy, isn't it? Hosea is a tender prophecy, and it ends with Hosea chapter 14. We will read it first, Sri Lanka. Hmm? Shall we start? Return, O Sri Lanka, to the Lord your God, for you have stumbled because of your iniquity. Take words, O Sri Lanka, with you. And return to the Lord. Say to Him, Take away all iniquity. Receive us graciously, that we may present the fruit of our lips. Assyria will not save us. We will not ride on horses, nor will we see again our God to the work of our hands. For in You the orphan finds mercy. I will heal Sri Lanka's apostates. I will love Sri Lanka freely. For my anger has turned away from Sri Lanka. I will be like the dew to Sri Lanka. Sri Lanka will blossom like the lily. Sri Lanka will take root like the cedars of Lebanon. Sri Lanka's shoots will sprout, and Sri Lanka's beauty will be like the olive tree, and Sri Lanka's fragrance like the cedars of Lebanon. Those who live in Sri Lanka's shadow will again raise grain. And they will blossom like the wine. He will reign. He, his renown, Sri Lanka's renown, will be like the wine of Lebanon. Oh, Sri Lanka, what more have you to do with idols? It is I who answer and look out to Sri Lanka. I am like a luxuriant cypress. From me comes your fruit. Whoever is wise, let him understand these things. Whoever is discerning, let him know them. For the ways of the Lord are right, and the righteous will walk in them. Sri Lanka will walk in them, but transgressors will stumble in them. Initially, take a look. Take a look. Sir, the voice. Oh, John, ten fourteen, and the bookshelf. Oh, and no more sheep. Yeah. Goes on to say, and no one of mine, as the Father knoweth me, even so I know the Father, and I lay down my life for the sheep. And the other sheep I have, which are not of this fold, them also I must bring, and they shall hear my voice. So there is a there is move of the voice yeah. into again three okay. parts of cascading. So to that, John ten and fourteen is empty. Yeah. So we are adding columns. We put Luke two twelve, John ten, fourteen to seventeen. Uh, Ashanti will do some kind of one. Thank you. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Shall we just sing this before we again? Dinesh prays. Sweep over my soul. Sweep.
risens thus far. We thank you, Father, that we can look up towards you, Lord, and we can receive revelation from you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, that we can, Lord, speak to the city, we can 